Good Thursday evening and welcome to the NCW Life Evening News. I'm Grant Olson. Here are a few of the stories we have coming up for you tonight. The Chelan Douglas Health District says that a bat in Douglas County has tested positive for rabies. That's the second bat this week to be confirmed with the disease in our area. Representative Kim Schreier will make another visit to Wenatchee tomorrow, this time to host a roundtable on the fentanyl crisis in Chelan County. A red flag warning is in place through tomorrow with cooler and windy conditions on the way. An early morning auto wreck on Highway 97 at Orondo today left one motorist dead. The Washington State Patrol says the wreck was reported shortly after 3.30 a.m. The driver was southbound on Highway 97 near milepost 213 when the vehicle veered off the road, struck a tree, and burst into flames. The roadway was blocked for three and a half hours for emergency response, including fire suppression. The motorist was declared dead at the scene. That person has not yet been publicly identified, nor has the kind of vehicle involved. Wenatchee police are investigating the cause of a vehicle crash that resulted in a rollover this morning. Captain Brian Chance says when a white GMC envoy traveling south on Chelan Avenue entered the intersection at 1st Street, it struck a Toyota pickup heading east. The pickup ended up on its side, although the driver was not injured. The accident happened just before 9 a.m. Chance says the driver of the envoy was transported for medical attention. He said it's unclear which vehicle had the green light at the time of the accident. It remains under investigation and neither driver has been ticketed. The Chelan Douglas Health District says that a bat in Douglas County is tested positive for rabies. That's the second bat this week to be confirmed with the disease in our area. The health district said they were notified by a Douglas County resident of a pet-only exposure to a bat by their two dogs. The bat was submitted to the Washington Animal Disease Diagnostic Laboratory and was confirmed positive by the Washington Department of Health. CDHD says this is the first rabid bat report in Douglas County this year. It comes after the health district announced earlier this week that a rabid bat was found in Chelan County on August 8th. When we come back, backcountry fires that had been smoldering around north central Washington have grown more active with the recent high temperatures contributing to much of the diminished air quality over the past two days. Speaking of fire, the Wenatchee Valley Fire Department called in off-duty personnel today to help face down any wildfire threat during the current heat emergency. And with this scorching heat, the Chelan County PUD has released a list of energy-saving methods that just might help you out. I'm Grant Olson, and you're watching the NCW Life Evening News. had a seizure in the middle of the night and they rushed me to the hospital and decided um, to induce labor to try to get the baby out. The outpouring of love and support I got from Confluence Health. My co-workers coming to the ICU to be with me. For me, it's the work family. It's just incredible to have support no matter what I'm going through in my personal life, my, my own health. At DA Davidson in Wenatchee, they believe your investment success begins with a personalized plan. A plan that is the roadmap you need to navigate your way to living your best years in retirement. DA Davidson can help you create a plan so you can take the time to enjoy the finer things in life. Let the financial advisors at DA Davidson help chart your retirement future today. 
backcountry fires that had been smoldering around north central Washington have grown more active with the recent high temperatures contributing to much of the diminished air quality over the last two days. Nearest to the Wenatchee Valley is the Air Airplane Lake fire burning since July 7th in the Glacier Peak Wilderness about 22 miles northwest of Leavenworth. On Tuesday, the fire kicked up its growth to reach about 900 acres in the remote White River drainage. That's led Chelan County to place a level one advisory notice on White River Road west of Tall Timbers Ranch. Those using trails and campgrounds in that area are asked to be aware of the fire risk. Also burning in the Glacier Peak Wilderness is the Dome Peak Fire, about 770 acres. And farther north, the 2,900 acre Sourdough Fire has continued to plague North Cascades National Park and has forced repeated closures on the North Cascades Highway. Well, speaking of wildfires, the Wenatchee Valley Fire Department called in off-duty personnel today to help face down any wildfire threat during the current heat emergency. Chief Brian Brett says he's asked both off-duty and volunteer firefighters to stand ready as soaring temperatures and potential high winds create a red flag condition. The National Weather Service is warning of temperatures up to 105 in some areas today and winds tonight that could gust to 50 miles an hour. Deputy Fire Chief Andy Davidson says the callback means there will be three additional brush trucks and two additional tender trucks in service, as well as an extra division commander to oversee those fire crews. The callback was to remain in effect until at least 9 o'clock tonight. U.S. Representative Kim Schreier is concerned with the skyrocketing number of fentanyl-related overdoses in Washington state. As a result, she'll host a roundtable to discuss the effects of fentanyl's presence in Chelan County. The event will take place on the first floor of Wenatchee City Hall this Friday at noon. Members of the roundtable alongside Schreier include Chelan County Commissioner Kevin Overbay, Wenatchee Valley Fire Chief Brian Brett, Wenatchee School District Superintendent Corey Callahar, and other local officials. We're all interested in energy efficient ways to stay cool during this heat wave. Well, there's no need to sweat your power bill because the Chelan County PUD has released a list of energy saving methods. These include utilizing ceiling or standing fans to circulate air, shading the outside of your home with the addition of an awning or sunshade, opening your windows at night when it's cooler, and turning your thermostat off, making sure your air conditioning system isn't old or leaking and is running running air efficiently. Also, opt to cook food on the barbecue or in the microwave so that you can heat your food without adding heat to your home. For more information, visit the PUD's website. Coming up next, we will bring you our weekly Pause for Pets feature with the Wenatchee Valley Humane Society, where we will introduce you to a husky with a ton of energy. Cooler and breezy tomorrow with a red flag warning in place for our area. I'll have all the details in your complete North Central Washington weather forecast. That and much more still to come tonight. Please stay with us. Bring the whole family up to Stormy Mountain Brewing and local public house in historic downtown Chelan. Applewood smoked brisket, street style tacos, and our award-winning barbecue rubs and sauces. Our meals pair perfectly with our exciting lineup of craft ales, made right here in Chelan. We've got room for big groups, or give us a call for catering. So grab the kids and check out the fun at Stormy Mountain Brewing and local public house located in the heart of Chelan. Are you hungry enough to eat the ass end out of a rhinoceros? I know how you feel. Come on out to Blueberry Hills, you'll have a great time. We've got excellent food, a feed on the furniture kind of experience, and we won't hustle you out of your table. If you want a real farm experience, make a trek to Manson to Blueberry Hills, where you sit, you pick, you eat, and you visit. So come on out and see what all the fuss is about. Blueberry Hills in Manson, it's where the world is coming to. Well, looks like our surgery patient is feeling better today. Yep, I didn't need any oxy today. I thought I'd do a little surgery on the drain. Uh -huh. Do you need your pain pills anymore? No. Well, we should get them out of the house. There are places to drop them off. Yeah, okay. Actually, I can do that right now. And I will look at the drain. 
Prevent opioid misuse. Find safe medication return options near you at med-project.org. Welcome back to the NCW Life Evening News. It's time now for our weekly Pause for Pets feature from the Wenatchee Valley Humane Society. Tonight's featured pet is a seven-year-old husky with a ton of energy. Hi, I'm Corley with Wenatchee Valley Humane Society, and I'm an animal care coordinator here. <laughs> so I get to play with Azalea um, most days in her ball. Um, Azalea came to us as a stray a little while back. Um, she actually was brought in by somebody, which is so kind. We really appreciate that. Um, she, she is doing awesome. Um, she's about seven years old, a husky mix, with still a lot of energy, as you can see. Um, she loves toys. She won't leave her kennel without one. She won't do an interview without one. <laughs> like this ball. Sit. She'll do anything for it. Good girl. <laughs> um, she loves people and loves playing. We, we don't know if she's good with cats, but we never really do when they're astray. She, I think because she is a little older, she's, um, she's a little bit set in her ways, so she's very particular with other dogs. She would prefer to be your only dog, your only best friend. Um, <laughs> But um, we do encourage you to bring your own dog, if you have one, down to meet her too, if you're interested. Um, <laughs> we are open um, Thursday through Tuesday um, from 11 till 6, and we would love for you to come by and meet Azalea. Give them a call at 509-662-9577 or visit their website at WenatcheeHumane.org. Time now to take a look at your North Central Washington weather forecast. Another hot day today. We didn't quite reach officially anyway 100 degrees today like we did all the rest of the days this week, but it was still a hot one. Part of the reason we did see more cloud cover out there today. Not so much as far as smoke like yesterday, but more clouds around our area today and that kept our temperatures down a little bit. But yesterday it was a hot one. Here are all the record highs that were tied uh, on August 16th, a freight 105 that tied a record going back to 2020 and here in Wenatchee, we reached 103 degrees officially and that tied a record going back to 1967. So yeah, it was a hot one yesterday. And what we're, what we're going to see now is some winds pick up tonight. We are going to have some cooler weather as we get into Friday, but I'll tell you what, hot, dry winds, that's going to continue tonight and will still be plenty warm tomorrow to issue that red flag warning. It is in effect and that will stay in effect until 9 p.m. tomorrow night. So be very, very careful, careful if you are outside and just watch out for everything out there. We are so dry right now. 96 unofficially our high temperature today, and that is still well above where we should be for this time of year at 86. Our record going back to 2008, 104 degrees this morning. Another mild one, 73 to kick off our day, 61 is our normal low, and 48, our record low set back in 1998. Sunrise now right at 6 a.m., and the sun is setting, well, at least tonight, at 8.09. All right, let's take a look at what we can expect for Friday. One thing that will definitely jump out, temperatures, a lot of temperatures, only in the 80s tomorrow, a big cool down. 91 for Moses Lake and Afreda, 90 for the high in Quincy, around 80. 87 Ellensburg up into Wenatchee, Eniat to Chelan and up into Omak, just a little bit warmer. Omak at 92. Leavenworth, a nice cool down for you folks tomorrow too with a high temperature of 85. All right, we've seen smoke and we've seen haze out there. Air quality right now, it's been awfully good in Wenatchee at a 41, also decent in Leavenworth at 28. Moderate for you folks in Kashmir at 61 right now. The two areas of concern, unhealthy air, 155 in Moses Lake and 175 up in OMAC. And I'll tell you what, OMAC has been hot and smoky the past three days. So that should go away tomorrow. 
as those winds pick up. We'll get to that in a second, but uh, here's what the reason we're seeing some of that smoke, the sa sourdough fire. This is that complex of fire and also the uh, airplane lake fire in the Glacier Peak Wilderness. That's part of that. And notice our wind direction coming right down through the valley and that's creating some of that smoke, but shouldn't be too bad tonight. High clouds out there. We will see maybe some breezy conditions develop tonight and it's still going to be awfully warm for overnight lows. We're we're talking low 70s and then for Friday Sunday here's that wind right through central Washington remember red flag warning in effect throughout the day tomorrow cooler too with highs in the mid to upper 80s generally for our viewing area and then getting into the upcoming weekend I'm telling you folks it's looking pretty nice out there sunny and mild on Saturday how about these high temperatures for Saturday into the mid 80s so actually back down to where we should be and it's going to be nice all over eastern in Washington. For Sunday, notice down in the desert southwest, this is a Hurricane Hillary, and look at all of the clouds it's bringing up with it. That will affect us next week, but not so much on Sunday. Warmer for Sunday, highs in the upper 80s, and then on Monday, here is that hurricane as it makes its way into the Rockies, lots of wind, and it's going to throw some clouds our way. We could see a chance for a scattered shower or two on Monday. High temperatures in the mid to upper 80s for Monday on Tuesday. Tuesday, sunny and seasonal. Things quiet down a little bit on Tuesday, but boy, our temperatures stay nice. High highs on Tuesday in the mid 80s, and look at all the 70s around the western U.S., so we are in for a cool down. For Wednesday, sunny and warm at the end of our forecast, and we'll stay about normal for this time of year with high temperatures Wednesday in the upper 80s. All right, your seven-day forecast now, and we'll see 71 overnight tonight. Windy and much cooler tomorrow. 87 are high, 61 are low and then a couple of really nice days on Saturday and Sunday 86 Saturday 86 on Sunday and we'll stay pretty much in the mid to upper 80s uh, Monday Tuesday and Wednesday just a slight chance for showers on Monday and that's a look at your north central Washington weather forecast coming up next tonight sports report with Eric Granstrom and more as the NCW life evening news continues right after this caught in a conflict family workplace, neighbor, business, housing disputes? Wenatchee Valley Dispute Resolution Center provides mediation services, a cost-effective and efficient way to provide a written resolution to disputes and issues. Plus, we offer mediation training and community education on conflict resolution and communication skills. Contact us to learn more. Castle Rock International is the Northwest premier real estate agency for large acreage properties, farms and ranch land, lodging and resorts, and other distinctive commercial real estate. Professional, knowledgeable, and discreet, Castle Rock International has the listings and the buyers you have been looking for. Contact John McNamara at Castle Rock International today or visit their website for more information on this award-winning company. I have no idea what I'm doing. That's why we need you. We need people to run cameras so I can get back down on the broadcast and talk about what's going on. We pay $75 per event. If it's sports, if it's a parade, if it's Apple Blossom, if it's the Super Oval, 75 bucks. If that sounds like some extra good money for you, we'd love you to be part of our team. All you have to do is email me, sports at ncwlife.com. Sports at ncwlife.com. In the meantime, I gotta go figure out this camera.
Well, the Mariners have won two straight in Kansas City last night by a score of 6-5. to five. Seattle got out to an early lead on an RBI single by Ty France and two-run homer by Cal Raleigh in the first. But the pesky Royals would not go away as they came back to tie it. Mariners finally pulled ahead with two runs in the ninth and held on for the win. Now this is into left field. It touches down for a base hit. Julio trots home to score. Three batters into the ball game, and the Mariners lead it one to nothing as Ty France remains smoking hot. This is a missile out to right field. Don't blink. This ball is gone for a home run. Number 21 for Cal Raleigh, and it got out of here in a heartbeat. How about a line drive? It's going to be a long run for Hernandez, and he heaves it all the way to the plate. But no chance, and the Royals get the run. Julio grounds this through the right side. Caballero scores. Rojas makes the turn first to third. And Julio is two for two, a double, and now an RBI single. And there's a fly ball to left field. Marlowe heaves it to the plate. Waters scores. And the Royals have two runs, both on sacrifice flies. There's a gapper. Left center field. And off the wall. Salvi will be held. No, he's coming to the plate. Relay throw is offline. Grounded to short. And the Mariners turn a double play. The Royals get a run. 1-1 one, one pitch. Towards the line. Foul territory. Catch made. Dillon going to try to score. Here's the play. He is to get the hand in there. Off the hands and through the right side. Julio drives in the insurance the Mariners crave here in the ninth inning. Caballero is out at third base. Oh, belted into the corner. And it's a one-run game. Ground ball. Brash able to get there. A little flip. And this one is over. The Mariners take the series advantage. Two games to one. They move within a game of the wild card chase. Luis Castillo pitched seven innings to earn his ninth win of the season. Manager Scott Service says it wasn't an easy outing for the Seattle veteran. It took him a while to kind of get into his stuff tonight. And we've seen that from Luis once in a while. Um, he did find it and uh, was able to get through it. But again, the Royals are on it. You know, offensively, obviously, Julio, huge night tonight. Um, probably the most impressive thing he did tonight was to take the single to the right field uh, in a huge spot there in the ninth inning where we need all the insurance runs we can get. It proved to be the winning run in the ball game. And uh, when he does those type of things, he just takes us to another level. So Cal, big night, coming out with a home run early. Um, you know, on the opener early, that we had a lot of traffic, and we left a ton of guys on base tonight. We probably should have scored more runs than we did. But um, as their bullpen has struggled a little bit here in this ballpark, I thought Spire threw the ball really well, and, and so did Brash. The two teams were wrapping up the four-game series earlier today. We'll have highlights tomorrow morning on Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. The Mariners will head to Houston after this series. Speaking of, the Astros made a winner out of Justin Verlander again, coming up with a 12 runs and 12 hits with homers by Alex Bregman, Kyle Tucker, and Chase, uh, Chase McCormick in a 12-5 decision over Miami. Paul Blackburn and Austin Pruitt held St. Louis scoreless on nine hits in Oakland's 8-0 shutout to the Cardinals. Ty Detmers and two relievers combined on a three-hit shutout as the Angels beat the Rangers 2-0. Shohei Otani hit his 42nd homer as he and Matt Tice provided all the offense Los Angeles would need with a solo home run. Texas's lead in the AL West shrunk to two and a half games over Houston with the loss last night. Well, taking a look at the American League wildcard chase, Philadelphia beat Toronto 9-4, so the Blue Jays lead for the final playoff spot. Just a game over Seattle. Boston fell to Washington 6-2 to fall three games back. Atlanta shut out the Yankees to put New York six and a half games behind for the final wildcard playoff spot. Well, the Seahawks continued training camp when Wednesday with temperatures in the mid-90s in Renton. Despite the temperatures, 71-year-old head coach Pete Carroll was out there running 100-yard wind sprints up and down during practice. Quarterback Geno Smith says he's an inspiration for the rest of the team. That's Pete, man. Um, he's, a, he's the ageless wonder, man. He's, uh, he's one of those guys that when you look at him, he motivates you every single day, right? You see your head coach out there running sprints. It doesn't matter how old he is. You know, he's out there. He's getting it. It's hot out here, and he's working as hard as we're working. And so when you got a head coach like that, man, I mean, 
it's, it's not it's not hard to come to work and, and, and give it your all. The competition continues to ramp up in the defensive backfield for Seattle with what some consider its deepest pool of talent since the Legion of Boom days. Smith says the battle for starting positions on the defensive side does nothing but make everyone better on both sides of the football. But I will say one thing that I, you know, I, I love seeing is, um, like I said, the depth and just the, mul the multiple playmakers, right? You got guys like, you know, uh, Nino Diggs and you got Julian Love back there, you know, veteran safeties who can communicate, who understands it, who sees, who's seen ball. You got Tariq Woolen, you got Mike Jack, you know, Witherspoon, uh, Kobe Bryant. I mean, you can, you can name, goes on and on, just a list of names of guys who can make plays and they're all out there competing as if they haven't done anything. And so when you got guys like that, um, you know, it's, it's not, it's not hard to get better. And so uh, I enjoy just watching the way they fly around and make plays. They've made it hard on me every single day and it's got, it's made me get better as well. Seattle's preparing to face Dallas in their second test of the preseason Saturday. That'll be at Lumen Field. Kickoff set for 7 o'clock on King 5 TV. Dignitaries from throughout the valley were present at the Town Toyota Center for a ribbon-cutting ceremony yesterday. East Wenatchee Mayor Jerry Lee Crawford and Wenatchee Mayor Frank Kuntz held the ribbon as Gretchen Littler, the Wenatchee Wild Director of uh, Sales and Marketing, officially cut it to open the team's first official season in the Western Hockey League. The Wenatchee Valley Chamber of Commerce and Town Toyota Center staff helped organize the event. While the name is the same, the uh, many faces remaining, such as Gretchen and Bliss Littler, the team is actually Actually, the former Winnipeg Ice, the WHL franchise, was purchased this offseason by David and Lisa White and moved to Wenatchee with league approval. Now, Kevin Constantine has been named the Wild's new head coach, while Chris Clark stays as the team's associate head coach and assistant general manager. Wenatchee's first preseason game will be September 9th against the Tri-City Americans at 6 o'clock. They'll start the regular season September 22nd against the Portland Winterhawks. Go to WenatcheeWildHockey.com for more information and if you want to get some season tickets. Well, baseball team, a baseball team, made up mostly of players from Brewster is playing in the Babe Ruth World Series in Missouri. Farmer is playing in the 16 to 18 year old tournament in Cape Girardeau, Missouri. They're two and one and were facing Alabama this evening in the last pool play before beginning bracket play tomorrow. It's the first time in 20 years the Babe Ruth World Series has included international teams. Now, interesting, Brooks and Cooper Pinsky are continuing a generational tradition uh, with their family by playing in this year's tournament. Their grandfather, Terry, played in the Babe Ruth World Series in 1957 in Ann Arbor, Michigan. He'll be throwing out the first ceremonial pitch for tonight's game. How about that? Good luck to Farmer. That's Lucas Sports News. I'm Eric Grandstrom. Have a happy Thursday. On the next edition of Wake Up Wenatchee Valley, we made the road trip out here to Moses Lake. We're visiting here at the, uh, what is the name of this place, Doug? What's the official name? Surf and Slide Water Park. It's also known as Funsville, USA. We're talking about Moses Lake Parks, Recreation, and Cultural Services with a guy who runs it, Doug and his left-hand gal, Lynn, and we're here at this beautiful aquatic center, and you're gonna learn all about it and other cool things about Moses Lake Parks and Rec on the next edition of Wake Up on H.E. Valley. And that will do it for our newscast tonight. For more on these stories and other news from around North Central Washington, you can find us on Facebook or our website at ncwlife.com. And remember, if you see news happening, we'd like to hear from you. You can send us an email at news at ncwlife.com or give us a call at 888-6295. I'm Grant Olson. Thanks so much for being with us and have a great night.